I wish I could sing my soul, but I can't, and I know it, cause I'm just a poet. And there are better people than me, gifted by the powers that be who have the strength to move mountains from one shining sea to the other. These gifted sisters and brothers with the ability to touch every soul in between the Colorado Rockies and the Pennsylvania Alleghenies. I confess, sometimes the rise of Mount Rose up towards Red Lion conquers me. But I have a book that says if I rise up on the wings of the dawn and settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your rod and your staff will hold me fast. See, I know there are days when the burdens we carry chafe our shoulders and wear us down, and the road just to get from the house to downtown seems lined by sadness unconquerable. But in that moment... When I lift my eyes to the sunrise, I never fail to hear the song of a voice who has the power to sing a soul. See, I might be a mayor with only six officers on the street who still has to find a way to put people to sleep at night with lullabies of a safer tomorrow or a teacher who searches daily for the perfect formula to make inspiration greater than the sum of poverty plus habit plus fear. See, it's not that we're there, but if Dr. King himself were here, he would say, little black boys and little black girls and little white boys and little white girls, you are men and women now, with power in the curl of your bicep and miracles in the lift of your voice and making the choice to speak kindness and hope or patience and understanding is beauty being reborn into the world. It's reality, molded and baked into something that nourishes the spirit. And I promise you, no matter who you are or what you do, you bring something to the table. So no matter what form your voice may take, music, art, poetry, sing your soul. And as a poet, I'm going to sing too.
That was Eric de Almeida, who is not only an incredible musician, synthesizer, harmonica, guitar, bass, everything player. He's actually the artist behind the art that's been decorating our set today and is one of the members of King's Courtyard Art Collective that's at 124 East King Street. So here to talk about the layers and everything he does. This is Eric. Okay, so if you had to pick a first love, is it gonna be music or art? Art. But I like music to listen to while I'm doing art. Okay. And my CD collection and vinyl's pretty uh, large. Vinyl. Yeah. Okay, so you're an old school guy. Yeah. I didn't want to get into it for a while because uh, I knew I'd get into it too much, you know. But now I'm into it. You just couldn't help yourself. Yeah, it's a little better. Okay, so tell me about some of the art that we have up. You have a really unusual style. It's not exactly your typical pretty pictures of fruit and... No. That stuff's boring most of the time, unless it's like Van Gogh did it. <laughs> okay, so when you do this art, what are you trying to say with it? Since somebody else would look at it and, you know, might be like, okay, I don't get it. I don't see it. What's in it? What am I looking for? Um... When I look at art, I, uh, I just really connect sometimes with the artist. Um, same when I'm looking at someone else's. Um, and I'll just, you know, I could still be staring at that painting, uh, you know, and, I, and I'd be fine dying staring at it. And, uh, yeah, that, I mean, that's just a couple, I mean, I've had paintings I've seen that have changed my life. And I'm not the best verbal communicator all the time. Uh, I'm okay when I like write a poem every once in a while, um, but total renaissance man. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay with the poetry. I, I like the Civil War. I think the best one I ever wrote was about uh, Antietam and uh, Burnside's Bridge, where you know it, the one line I wrote. It's uh, you know more people died in Antietam in those two days than people died in the whole uh, World War Two. You know in those two mm. days. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, I. Uh, the art is really like whatever's coming out of my head that I can't say. So you don't necessarily plan what you're going to paint or think very intellectually about the layers. It's just an emotion coming out through paint. I don't think about it too much. No, I, uh, it's you'll you'll drive yourself nuts if you think. I used to think too much. Now I don't think enough, probably. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's. Um, Sometimes I'll have an idea, like colors. Mm -hmm. I'll have like, uh, sometimes I'll, I'll have, you know, especially for my bigger ones, I'll make, I make all my own paint and I'll, um, you know, mix the paint all week. You know, I'll know what colors I'm going to use and everything. And, um, and, and then it'll, I mean, I'll have an idea what colors, but I mean, I have no idea what, I mean, sometimes I'll be like, you know, I want to swirl up here and then, you know, down here, but then sometimes it ends up getting covered anyway. So you actually make your own paint? Yeah. Yep. I make my own paint. Uh, I make my own oils, acrylics. I go to the hardware store. I buy a lot of stuff there. I actually buy the stuff that they make the paint out of at the hardware store. I buy dry pigments. A lot of stuff you can't, I use, you don't, you know, you can't go to Michael's and get it. Uh, I go to like online and stuff. So what got you into that? Like, why not just go to Michael's and... Yeah. Get some oil paint. <laughs> well, I uh, I got into drawing and I learned how to draw from a really cool guy in my high school, and he really brought out a side of me that you know I was stuffing down, and uh, yeah, I was still I was pretty angry in high school, and um, I had pretty much everything, and that was how I found you know to escape um, in like a positive way and. I would, you know, draw and my, you know, drawing started developing and I started doing more abstract. He did, he liked a lot of abstract and he has a lot of similar, you know, most art teachers are really like, you know, you know, learn how to paint correctly or right. whatever. Here's, do your perspective, draw your straight lines, do this. You got it. And he was very much like, look at how the pencil, look at what the pencil makes. Look at, look at what, you know, and, and just, he just totally thought about it differently than, um, and uh, he really, you know, pushed me. He actually confronted me in the hallway um, 
in junior year and I took his class senior year. And he confronted me, he says, you will take my class next year. <laughs> and, and I said, well, it's senior year, I'm going to want a lot of free periods missing up here. <laughs> and um, he goes, you will take my class next year. I said, all right. And um, yeah, I took it and I started, uh, pretty much I wouldn't do my homework or anything. And I just would draw. And, uh, and I, I started seeing some of his drawings. He would bring his drawings in and he would draw with us, you know, and... Um, and I started kind of emulating some of the stuff he did and, and using the same um, markers and, and colored pencils. And it started, and I, I started liking abstract more. And then, like I said, I started, I would go to a museum here and there. And every once in a while, you know, most of the old stuff would be like, you know, it, it's, it's to be respected. And, uh, you know, it, it, it has its own meaning. It's not, it's not that I don't like a lot of old uh, paintings, it's just that it doesn't speak to me now. You wanted to jump off and, and take it to a, a more personal level. Right, uh, it's different times, even if you look at, um, you know, uh, my mom's generation and everything, I mean, it's just, it's oh. not this, well, <laughs> no, you're not there, you're not there yet, but. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, God bless you. Well, you're, you're young in spirit, and that's what's important anyway. <laughs> and, uh, right. yeah. And well, I don't remember what I was talking about. <laughs> okay, so after high school, did you end up going and studying art, or did you actually teach yourself how to do these things? Kind of, uh, I would see paintings, and I would like certain things about them, and I'd figure out how to do it. Um, and I had a teacher in college, and in college I didn't really do much of anything. Um, except for uh, get in trouble. And they said I was a menace to the community and the student body, and I probably was. <laughs> nice, uh, mm, it's a whole nother interview. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could go on about that. And uh, yeah, but I had a teacher and, and he was kind of the same, he was a priest and he had the same kind of like, just do what you want to do, you know, don't think about, uh, like what other people are telling you. And it's a very Buddhist mentality, uh, you know, don't believe anything that anyone else tells you unless it agrees with your soul. Uh, so I know Buddha said that at some point. And, um, so now you're actually doing that at King's Courtyard. What inspired you, since your art is so personal, to end up joining a collective? My friend, uh, Pat Thomas, is in it. And I know her, and we would talk about art every once in a while. And I, I don't talk to very many people. I'm pretty, uh, you know, loner or whatever. And uh, and I would talk to her about it. And she asked me to go in there. And I went and checked it out. And it was a little too much money for what I wanted. And uh, I wanted a smaller space because I wanted to sell them. I didn't want to, you know, I'm not dumb. <laughs> I didn't want to put them all right. up and you know here and you know not make any money and it, um, but uh, I don't it's not all about the money either I, mean, uh, I just if I break even or even you know, a little less I'm I'm happy and I, I want people to enjoy them that's that's always what I wanted I, I mean people would always ask me be like uh, I be you know I draw and stuff and they'd be like well can I see some I'm like well I give them all away <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. so uh, and and now I, I still give them away every once in a while if uh, if I feel like it. Um, and don't yeah, tell him, don't tell anybody that, yeah. don't tell anybody well, that. Well, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I right. felt like you. So cool. if you feed me a bunch, I'll give it to you. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Artists will work for food. Yeah. That sounds fair. Yeah, very uh, bomb mentality. It's a recession. Right. Really, yeah. is what it is. So people can come and find you at King's Courtyard, which is also on Facebook at King's Courtyard Art Collective, and it's at 124 East King Street. That's right. First Fridays, you guys are there. Saturdays, you guys are there. Yes, I play music uh, there first Fridays, too. Um, awesome. Yep, usually. I usually try and get some people, but um, some other people, but yeah, maybe I'll meet more people. And... Shoot, you've got 17 instruments. You are a whole band. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're all of it. I'm not right a good there. drummer. Oh, well, everybody has to have something they're still working on. That's it. Awesome. Well, I will be seeing you on first Friday. And the uh, third um, Friday. And the third poetry. Friday, that's right, at Poetry Night at King's Courtyard at third Friday. You come and jam out there, too. 
Okay. Perfect. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you for sure. coming down and talking to us. Always a pleasure to see you. I know. And next up is actually one of King's Courtyard's neighbors, Missy McLaren, who's the poet in residence for the Parliament Art Collective, which is at 116 East King Street. So her poetry is going to be up next. This poem is called Mercy. I watch her as she finds solace in her sleep. Her grace shows in her breathing. Calm as I imagine she's finding him now. The foreign cologne in the room cannot lie for her, telling me that he was recently here. The searing pain that her open eyes show, I live among the hateful glances. Not all for me, but for the clear white walls and for something that she'll never have, peace. She's begun to resent the air when it's not moving. She'll notice a lack of wind and her face takes on a barren expression when the storm has passed. Asleep, she moves with the rhythm that she lacks otherwise. Her breasts, bare and showing her age, rise and fall with a one, two, three. If I thought he wasn't temporary, I would leave them to a smiling life. But I know her better than she knows her now, because I know her from when she was able to embrace a day with her heart and love before the sadness madness took her away. She doesn't remember herself then, and her substitute happiness has never even met that girl. The doctor spoke frankly to tell me that if she didn't do what was ordered of her, that that girl, the one that stole my breath and holds me hostage even now, was never coming back. It's easy to pick up the pillow, to smell her afternoon liaison, and to place it over her beautiful mouth. She barely fights as she wakes to watch the love in my face. Her eyes, tired and glossy, close, and I watch her as she finds solace. This poem is called Pash, which is the object of one's affection. One sticky summer afternoon, a boy surprised me. I opened my door to that sexy smile and the most perfect ice cream sundae. A stemmed glass tulip dish with whipped cream, cherries, and intensity, just the way that I liked him, much like the churned vanilla. I tried not to let on that I was melting when the tips of his mouth came up to almost a smirk, playful. His eyes took mine eyes down in those hands that I wanted on me was a butterfly, alive, fluttering, like a work of art, this boy and his butterfly. I gasped with delight when I settled down my belly lust and regained my proper girl composure. I politely asked him in. He was about to follow me, and then I woke up. A winter poem. I am disconnected and I am getting younger. Each day of distress rips a year off of the calendar. Like a meeting room easel, people over talking, trying to be smarter than one another. They don't notice the silent corner people. They write markers squeaking so fast it comes close to a humming lull. If you listen for a rhythm, it will come. The tear brings me back. Chart, graph, squeak, graph, chart, tear. Soon, there are so many years gone that I am nine years old and I am disconnected. Like my hair that shows the rough edges, 
boldly nod off in small childlike fingerfuls. And what did they do when they noticed? They gave me these. Go to sleep. Stay awake. Stop fidgeting. Just relax. But I never did. But I did stop eating my own hair and my pencil erasers. And the crayons stayed crayons instead of becoming unique totem poles. Instead, I ate, go to sleep, stay awake, stop fidgeting, just relax. But I never did. And I still lean on my best friend and listen to the squeak, tear, chart, graph, graph, chart, squeak, tear, and I am disconnected. So here we are with Missy McLaren, a board member at the Parliament, host of their Poetry Night, and an incredible local poet. Okay, so you busted onto the scene just a couple years ago. Before that, you were busy being an accountant. I am the holder of all details, and now suddenly you're the diva of creative expression. Like, how exactly did you make that, do you make that transition on a day-to-day -day basis? I actually never transitioned. <laughs> I still actually do both. And part of why uh, it, some people will think it's a little bit of an anomaly, but it's <laughs> being on the board of the parliament, part of what I do is some organizing and paying attention to details. I help organize events and sentences. <laughs> nice. So when you're writing poetry, do you have the same approach? Does that logical brain kick in? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Maybe uh, once in a while I'll reread a piece and uh, or say it out loud. I think that's important. And if a, a word won't fit, I'll try to rack my brain for a different word uh, just to, to make the language flow. But really, when I write, it's kind of a word vomit process. It's all emotion for the most part. So does it help to be able to have the poetry to get some of those emotions out? I mean, your writing is pretty intense. Does that actually help or is it just, this is something that I, I need to do just to get it out, but? Both. Um, I think that having, setting aside the time to be able to to write, and uh, I know that a lot of my poetry is a little what people call prosy. I, I like to tell a story, and it's really the story that's in my head, and it needs to come out. And being able to do that, it kind of allows me to set that aside, and then I can do the other work that I like to do with the details and the organizing. And, mm -hmm. and I almost can, as long as I'm doing both, now, if I'm missing one, then not so much. The other one will suffer. But as long as I'm doing both, I can do them both well. So poetry is a need. It's mm -hmm. not like an elective, right. oh, I choose to do this today. No, no, I, I don't sit down and, and really think about it. It's something I have to make this time. I have to, otherwise I'll go a little stir crazy. So I have to. So tell me about some of the things you do for the Parliament. You don't just organize their poetry night. You do all kinds of different things there. Well, we, we are a board of seven, and we, it's, it's been really interesting because we're uh, diverse in age and background, life stories, and we're all very different. So to kind of come together and collaborate and put those ideas into motion, now we go, it, we go around town and people know us, people recognize us, people like what we're doing for the community. And it's, I, you can't even, you almost can't fit each one of us into one specific job because we're, we're all doing a little bit of the organizing, the creative, the marketing, the a little bit of everything, and we each mm -hmm. have a hand in it. 
Well, that's kind of what Parliament seems to be known for. I mean, I know they started as primarily a visual art gallery mm -hmm. and space, but now I hear about them for music concerts, the poetry mm -hmm. night. You guys have a fashion show coming up. We do. First Friday, March, Spring Forward is um, at mixing art with fashion about to create more art. And it's really all we can do, whether it's music, poetry, now fashion, you know, almost anything we can get our hands-on art-wise to share with the community and kind of make them see it, we'll do it. Yes. Now, I know your poetry night there is every fourth Friday mm -hmm. at the Parliament yeah. at 116 East King Street, and that's 7.30 at night. Now, that's kind of a rowdy, <laughs> wild sort of night there for it being an evening of poetry. Do you do that on purpose? I do, actually. <laughs> uh, we we have so many great events in this town, and each one kind of has separated itself that we want to do them all. I mean, I want to go to the King's Courtyard. I want to go to City Arts. I want to do all of that because it's different everywhere you go. And so when I wanted to do it, I wanted to focus a little bit more on some new poets, some people that you've never heard of. I want to give them a voice and I'll mix it up a little bit and put a little, drop a little bit of a seasoned poet in there once right. in a while. But, but really, I want to give them a voice. And in order to do that, to help them relax and to show them that it, we're kind of like a family that you, you can come there, be yourself. We advertise we're uncensored. You don't bring your children. You know, right. you know no offense to people that want Leave to bring the their kids. I have home. I have my own, and so and he he's not allowed to go either. So which kind of makes him a little mad once in a while. But <laughs> right. otherwise, if if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be creating the atmosphere for them to come in and dive in and give it a shot for the first time. And so I. Be yourself and let's have a lot of fun with it. You know, last time I I made pizza rolls. I, it was a Friday <laughs> night. I was hungry. I knew I wasn't going to be the only one. So, so it was poetry so, and pizza you know, rolls. Hang out with us and see art and and share your art with us. So is that kind of the philosophy behind the Parliament and the poetry night there is just find a place to come, be yourself, express yourself, no boundaries. No yeah, sensors. It's, it's been a great mix. We just did the Parliament. We just did the uncovered First Friday show with naked versus nude art, kind of whatever that might mean to you as an artist. I can't tell you what it means to you. And so we just put it out there, and, and it was a great show. And just people, we want people to find their voices. And with the poetry night that I host, it's no different. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming down, Miss Parliament Poetry. <laughs> Very cool. Our next performer is super exciting to me. She moved up here just a few months ago from the Baltimore hip hop circuit, and now all of a sudden she's taking York poetry by storm. She's also an artist who does incredible oil paintings in her art collective, Trashed at Noon. She's going to share some of her poetry with us today, and then we'll get to talk to her about her music, her poetry, and her art. Ladies and gentlemen, the Renaissance woman and the multi-talented son. A unicorn soliloquy. You could silence the world and not hear me coming with expectations drumming in your curious ears. Fear not, my horn warns no danger. Peace emanates when I sing in a thousand languages simultaneously. Watch every word birth rainbows and walk on water tricks to prove my truth. No smartphones or tape recorders allowed, only mind. Listen, phonographic memories etched onto the DNA of a chosen few. The messenger drops from her mouth wisdom, then drinks from the land before resting by the river. Procreate truth, bury your lies beneath the sea, wash your dirty laundry until it is all clean. I'm sick and tired of saying he is not home, 
when he is upstairs in the closet, waiting for my innocence to convince them away. So I say nothing. I just stare and let her do all the talking. Looking up, shaking my head, then return to my pallet in the sunroom, laying down in front of the metal space heater, staring into the sky through the sheets hanging from the window. I'm just a kid. Why is it I can see and she cannot? Every motion slows into an overstanding of its effects on them, on me, on us. I live, but they're dead. Lost in translation, hangover. Psychedelic mushrooms must have been slipped into my hot chocolate. I'm floating a foot above the dirt through vine and moss covered trees, dodging the pigeon shit giggles, searching for nothing, foggy steam that prevents the ground from being seen. I don't care, I'm aware of everything. Fear does not know my spirit. Left turn into the forest of scatter. Everything's running, running faster. Unable to make out the creatures, the landscape. Everything is moving, making me dizzy. Be still, I yell. Everything freezes. She needs me to need her. Stepping stones handmade, she needs me to forgive her. I'm safe but not at the mercy of she I named queen of heaven. I take no pleasure in demonizing you. I just want to say goodbye. I just want to kiss you hello. The pain is too much to bear. My heart is gone elsewhere. My mind is Romare, collaged out of all sorts of everything far and near. Can I trust you? The magic eight ball says, yeah, right. You cannot change the channel. I phase the scramble into a white line of white noise that dumps every doubt from the mouth of your scorn. There are always two sides and a third. See it not, but you know it's there. How it looks, how it feels, to assume is not fair. To assume is not rare. Balloon and ride that hot air into the cool of the winds, clouds high, shading from the sun, such a ripoff like suicide, perfect aim, temple to gun. And we're back with Sun. Okay. The AKA. <laughs> What's the story behind being the sun? I mean, if you pick big shoes to fill, that's... Some pretty big ones. You couldn't just be like Saturn or Uranus. You had to go straight with the whole, the sun, center yeah. of everything. Yeah. Uh, back when I started rapping, um, I chose the name Black Sun. And the reason why I chose the name Black Sun uh, was because I was pretty much tired of everything negative and dark and, you know, gloomy being described by the word uh, black. And I felt that, you know, black was beautiful. Like I was black, you know. Most of the people in my neighborhood was black and I just. So it was a way it, of reclaiming, a way of saying, hey, I want to put something positive associated with right. this word. Okay. Right, I just decided to um, use my music to send out positive messages. And, and So was the sun the positive message? That was the light coming? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So then you ended up evolving from hip hop over into poetry. What made you make that transition? Well, um, I always wrote. Um, back when I was a teen, it was more like journaling, just uh, releasing to get through the hard times. Um, I never considered myself a poet. I would just write things down, wouldn't even read them at that moment, uh, and just leave them be, and just go back, read them weeks later, months later. And I started noticing that uh, it, it had a bit of a poetic flow. <laughs> Poetry was the pattern. Yeah, yeah. Okay. but uh, I never quite stuck with poetry. It was more so uh, emceeing and rapping, which is a bit of a different uh, perspective, <laughs> yeah, I would say. Yeah, it's a slightly different world. Yeah, so all this, still poetry, but. Coming up from Baltimore and being more involved in the music scene down there and, and the club scene, and then now you're up here in Pennsylvania. How is that different? How is it different? Yes. <laughs> the cities or, or, or <laughs> the, the, Does it feel different trying to present your art up here to such a different audience? 
or do you find um, that the message still carries and everybody I, hears you? I feel like I'm just able to give a different part of me that I wasn't able to give back home. Um, here, poetry is uh, more personal for me. It's, um, I don't know, I, I guess you could say more sensual or softer, I don't know, but when I'm seeing it was more of uh, an aggressive message. It, it was getting things out uh, in general formats, my opinions on you know, the social statuses and stuff like that. But poetry is more my personal uh, innermost mm, experiences. Giving you the opportunity to tell your story right, as opposed to right. the story of an entire people. Right, and I mean, I've told many of my, my stories um, when rapping as well, but it's, it's just a different way that I gave it. Okay. Yeah. So now, you don't just write poetry now, you've started painting and creating art. What made that leap come into play? I mean, I can understand <laughs> music to poetry, but then poetry to oil painting? <laughs> it's all the same uh, to me. It's just a different language. It's just a different way to give it. So from rapping to poetry to art to playing an instrument to, I don't know, drawing, baking, cooking, gardening, whatever. Like <laughs> The artistry of gardening. Yeah, you know, it's, I feel like it's all different languages. You're just speaking with a, a different tool, I guess. So is there anything that you can say in art that you can't say in poetry? Or do you have different messages, different parts of you that you put out in each one? Yeah, I would definitely say there's different parts of me um, that I put out in each one. But art is just, it's a feeling. Like, it's, it's all about the feeling with me mostly. And you don't have to say anything. You don't have to try to say something the right way or you know, it's, it's up to the person to look at it and to just feel and take from it whatever your energy that you put into it, you know, gives them. So I know a lot of your art is actually quite abstract. Mm -hmm. When you look at it, it's not that there's, this is a picture of, you know, that perennial bowl of fruit or, right. you know, the girl ballet dancing. Right. So when people look at your art, what do you want them to see in it? Um, different things. <laughs> Sometimes it's just, uh, sometimes I want people to be shocked. Sometimes I just want people to think. Um, sometimes I just want them to feel it. I like just showing somebody a, a piece and asking them to tell me what they see and what they feel about it and, and not share what my actual intentions was when painting it. You're gonna make them work for it. Well, I feel like you should. I, I feel like people need to um, get back in touch with dreaming and imagination and not just want, not just expecting everything to just be given to them, you know, just here, here's a picture of a horse, you know, <laughs> like look at it and tell me what you see, you know, feel it, you know, travel with it a bit. Okay, so now you have started up your own Etsy shop. Right. Which the address is? Uh, it's www.etsy.com slash shop slash trashed at noon. Okay, trashed at noon. Yeah. It's getting started a little bit <laughs> early in the day, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, trashed after five o'clock somewhere. No, no, no. We're yeah. trashed straight up at noon. Yeah. Everything outside of the norm is great. <laughs> so trashed at noon to you is about breaking the Just boundaries, freedom. doing yeah. what you want to do. Yeah. Whenever you feel it. It's all about the feeling. Whenever you feel it, just do it. You know? Like okay. most people would say, you know, being drunk at 12 o'clock is like, you know, outrageous. But just taking that um, but it's, metaphorically it's and art, just, right, right you know, course, just those, that's what I'm saying. You know? <laughs> but, uh, you know, metaphorically, just being lost in, in something in the middle of your day, you know, not having to, uh, you know, work or be stressed out or think about the troubles of the day. Just taking a moment to just... I don't know, just to get just lost in, yeah, to just be, lost yeah, exactly, yeah. So being so emotionally driven and, and right. wanting to live outside the boundaries, how does it work making the transition to being a businesswoman, being someone that has to manage your Pinterest feed and your Twitter feed <laughs> and, you know, making a point to sell that art as opposed to just being able to create it for fun? <laughs> you know... <laughs> yeah, um, I really, I really just want people to see and appreciate what it is that I do, and to just hear me, 
And so the, the, the business side, it, it puts a damper on things at times, you know, because, you know, it's, it's a lot of uh, things that come along with it. You know, I just really enjoy creating and the best way to get things out, you know, is through the social, you know, uh, media outlets and going different places and performing and, you know, getting a chance to mingle with the people. That part is cool, but, you know, the behind the scenes uh, networking and, and business aspect, it sort of takes away from the creativity sometimes. And you have to just put a pause on it all and just sort of get lost in the dungeon, so to speak. So when you go to create art, you right. tend to just lock yourself away and yeah. you have like a ritual, like you have to, you know, throw shaker assault over your shoulder <laughs> three times and to make the muse come. Like what do you have to do to get that art to come out? Just music. Whatever I'm feeling, I'll just find some music to uh, accompany my mood, which is often like trip hop or like some old soul, jazz, blues, and just feel it. Like music that, that holds a lot of emotion and then just let it move from there. But just music, shut the door. Don't disturb me, please. <laughs> okay, okay, on the spot, on the uh, spot. Rap something. <laughs> Sing something, come on, oh, give, me man. Some, give me some of that music right uh, now. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so cold, but I won't fold. Hanging on by the thread of my pole low. I love you, beautiful world, but I will never stop walking on my word, though. I'm standing tall, but if I fall, I'm right back up and I'm going harder. No success without sacrifice. Nonconformist, griot martyr. You have to learn your history. It was more than slavery. It was more than kings and queens. Don't say you can't, because you can be whatever that you want to be. Don't ever let them back you down. One time for the leaders, two in the air. Know who you are, rock your crown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So do you try to have a positive message like that in most of your music? I do. I think it's important. Um, I think it's extremely important. Uh, I think I was one of the semi-lucky ones to have people around who instilled in me uh, different things and opened me up to you know different religions and took me out of the hood and, and showed me the other side of the track, so to speak. Um, and I, I know you know a lot of people don't have that. And I personally grew up listening to music 24/7. And I credit music and, and writing. Um, so who are some of the, the writers or the artists or poets that, you know, musicians that really inspired you, that you took that from? Uh, man, I really, I absolutely loved uh, MCs like Nas, Talib Kweli, most of the So some conscious hip hop. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and then poetry, I'm like absolutely stuck on Saul Williams right now. He's, he's one of my favorite, favorite poets right now. Does that tend to change? You go through phases where you just can't get enough of somebody? Um, you know, some people stick, but you know, once you find somebody new, you, you, I, I tend to get lost and stuck on them and buying up a bunch of books by them and lost in their world. It depends. If they pull me in that way, then yeah. Okay, so if you had to pick one, you are only allowed to do one art form for the entire rest of your life. That wouldn't be possible. <laughs> that would be impossible. Yeah, I can't do that. Okay, well, luckily for us, you get to do all three. Yeah. Now, you have a book that's going to be coming out very shortly. Yes. And what's that book called? The book is called Heart. Excellent, yes. which is off of Poem Sugar Press, which is. is a local press. It is. Facebook.com backslash Poem Sugar. Yep. So that's going to be out this month. Right. So people can go check you out on Poem Sugar, and they right. can check you out on your Etsy page, which also has links to all your pages as well as pictures of your art. Right, correct? everywhere. Facebook, Twitter. You're everywhere. Pinterest, yes, everywhere. You're doing everything, and you're doing it everywhere. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Well, thank you for coming and talking to us. Thank you. <laughs> Our web clip of the week comes straight off of YouTube from a brand new friend of mine who is incredibly talented. His name is Obi Kaye, and he's a percussionist who specializes in every kind of exotic drum, percussion instrument, rattle. If you can name it, he can make a beat come out of it. So ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy the drum stylings of percussionist from Milford, Pennsylvania, Obi Kaye. Thank you. 
this month, I had a once in a lifetime experience. I got to sit there right in the third row and hear Dr. Maya Angelou speak at York College. She spoke about the importance of poetry and how important it was that we're not afraid of language. She didn't even do her own poetry for the most part. She quoted Invictus and Shakespeare and Edna St. Vincent Millay. She told people to go to their libraries, to read poetry, to discover new poets, to check out how important it was to understand that all these different voices and different types of language were actually ways that we'd all had across time and across cultural boundaries to say, I'm hungry, lonely, scared, tired, afraid. And that these were tools that were there for all of us, no matter how skilled or unskilled. No one should ever be afraid to read poetry, to write poetry, or to feel it. One of the poems that she read and that she quoted throughout her speech was about being a rainbow in somebody's cloud. So before we leave today, I just wanted to sign out with that. This is from earlier in Dr. Angelou's tour, and she just is reading her poem, Rainbow in Somebody's Cloud. So I leave you with that. Have a blessed week, and thanks for joining us on Culture in Maine. When you see them on the freeway hitching rides, with their dogs and their guitars by their sides, you need to ask, what's all the lying and the dying and the beating and the cheating all about. Take time out. When you see him with the band around his head and an army surplus bunk that makes his bed, you need to ask, what's all the bleeding and the kneading, the lying and the spying all about? Take time out. Take a minute, feel some sorrow for the folks who thought tomorrow was a place that they could call up on the phone. Take a month and show some kindness for the folks who thought that blindness was an illness that affected eyes alone. When you see her walking barefoot in the rain, and you know she's tripping on a one-way train, you need to ask, what's all the selling and the yelling, the beating and the cheating all about? Take time out. Oh, you can sell your soul for money, then run off to the country for your cookouts and your parties on the lawns. While our children seek sedation in Eastern meditation or visions that go shooting up their arms. When you know that youth is dying on the run and my daughter trades dope stories with your son, we better ask, what's all the bleeding and the needing, the killing and the thrilling all about? We better take time out and accept the fact that I I'm a rainbow in somebody's cloud, and I thank you.